Okay, kids, this is one of those shows that you should have said, oh man, I should have actually filmed this, but I didn't. This is a Yamaha EMX88S power mixer. This is the preamp and mixing section of it. This was my personal thing. I probably bought it in, I don't know, 2002 or three. So it's getting a little old, but as you can see, the condition on it is outstanding. I think the only place the paint is damaged is like right over there. But anyway, I lent this to some friends of mine, and I don't think they broke it, I really don't. But when it came back, channel 1 wouldn't really pass sound. Well, it would, but it was all distorted. It was almost as if it was some kind of open connection, and if you shouted in the mic, the sound could get past it. Well, I figured, well, that's got to be an open capacitor. No, it doesn't. So I was very, very frustrated and aggravated with it. All of the electronicals here are on the back and they're, they're surface mount. And I'm not really equipped to deal with that. I don't have the microscopes that really help to inspect all of this kind of stuff. I know I can and should buy them, but I really need a bigger workbench than where I work to do that. And for the one in 10 times I need it, you know, I don't know. So anyway, I went and got the heat gun the paint gun, the jumbo heat gun, which a lot of times whenever I have something that seems like an intermittent connection and I suspect that it's a broken solder joint, I can heat the board up with that and things get better. Well, I did heat up the board and things did get better. The sound got almost normal, almost to normal. Um, but then as soon as it began to cool, it began to fade again and get worse again. And that wasn't good. So I figured it had to be a something. So I did get a service manual. You can find that online. So if you do need to fix one of these, you can find a service manual. But um, anyway, channels one and two, um, they run through, this is one of the early stages, like this zone right here. So I started heating things up in zones with the paint gun. And if I heat it up around here, you know, which is our, uh, uh, there's a monitor one up here. And then like up here is the, the tone stack, tone stack or the EQ. Uh, nothing happened here, but when I got in here, this would change. And these four little itty bitty micro transistors, those are of course discontinuum, not going to find them. But it turned out at some point when I heated up this section, things were starting to work. So I had narrowed it down and I had eventually started placing my soldering iron on individual components, you know, without any solder on it, obviously. And this op amp, when I heated up the case of that op amp, was when the sound improved. Now, um, this is a little tiny SMD op amp. I'm really not equipped to solder on stuff this tiny and lo and behold of course nobody had one except for a few scalpers on eBay and the Chinese but I did find them at Mauser which was really a surprise because again nobody else had them. It's NJM2068MD is what it is and I got a few extras but um, these things were only like I don't know dollar something and then like you know nine dollar shipping for the order of stuff but just to give you an idea of how tiny this thing is let's see let's give me let's show you my pinky finger now granted there is some solder blobs on either side of it that I use to add some solder and hopefully lower the melting point but that's my pinky finger and I don't have big hands here people that's not a that's not a uh, comment on anything else other than the size of my hands and it's not a not a joke about our former president or anything but um, I was able to heat that up and remove that with the paint gun and then very, very carefully with my tiniest, pointiest, itty bitty solder pencil tip there, um, actually solder the new op amp and lo and behold it works. So a story of success, uh, uh, soldering SMD is not something I was really equipped to do but I decided I had to do it to save my mixer and I was kind of shaking like a charismatic the whole time. but. Uh, Glory, glory, it's fixed. Thought I'd share a story of success because, quite frankly, had I shelled out for somebody else to do this, it would have cost a king's ransom. And, uh, you know, it was already broke. I probably could have replaced this mixer with a used one for what a repair would have cost. So I'm very thankful I was able to fix my own for, you know, a, what we'll say if I include the shipping and one of those which is all I really needed even though I bought five so I spent an extra five dollars maybe they were what a dollar dollar twenty a piece something like that but I mean think about it twenty bucks in parts and a dollar's worth of solder 
but $100 worth of nervousness, let's put it that way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Okay, so it's all back together, and now it's back to being an 8-channel mixer instead of a 7-channel mixer with one noise channel. It's good. This is actually a pretty nifty, simple mixer for little bands. I mean, I'm sure there's probably something more fancy and complicated and computer-controlled and all of that kind of thing. But uh, I've done a number of gigs for people with this. Um, you know, done some like jazz groups and done live sound at small venues and things. And this has just been a reliable, easy to use unit that doesn't um, befuddle anybody with technical faux pas. It just works. So yeah, cool. You know, I I didn't know what I was doing breaking into this. Um, I'm not. You know, I'm, the circuits in these are past what uh, I usually work on, but again, that's how you grow. Um, read the service manual, find out you're going to be soldering SMD if you are going to be soldering anything. Go find something in the scrap heap that is SMD. Practice desoldering some little chips from it. See how you do, get the feel for it. And hey, hey, success and getting good at this thing is going to involve not knowing what you're doing um, you know, stressing out about it, maybe not stressing out about it, but at least trying, you know, find some broken stuff in the rubbish and play around with it. You know, it has no value if you break it, so what? And, uh, eventually you'll get the courage to start working on stuff that counts. So, anyway, that's a success story from an, that I didn't think we'd win, but I did win, and I figured I'd share it with you. I was originally planning on filming it, like I knew I was going to be victorious, but I chickened out. Oh well, so it goes. Take care.